Hello there, thanks for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard, and boy, the Yardbirds, huh? England's sensational Yardbirds in 1967 in the Los Angeles Beach suburb of Santa Monica, California. I'll give you a quick top-to-bottom scan of this beautiful psychedelic poster. Jim Salser presents in Santa Monica for a change. Usually he was presenting a hundred miles to the north in Santa Barbara. But look at that. Look at all the, the rich color and the artistic rendition of the Yardbirds' faces and everything. Just really a sweet poster for sure. And it was a big gig, you know, Los Angeles being the music capital and everything. And so you had several other acts on here which were name bands in the era for sure. But, you know, the legendary Yardbirds, boy, I'm sure everybody came out to see them. And most of their chart action by this time was behind them. They had logged um, five top 20 hits but they all came in 1965 and 66. And the Yardbirds had also charted five albums on Billboard's album chart. But interestingly, none of them except the greatest hits made it into even the top 50. So that's pretty amazing to hear about that lack of chart action. But what wasn't there on the charts was there an influence. Oh my goodness, with the three guitar gods, I don't need to tell you Eric Clapton, Jeff Beck, and Jimmy Page. In fact, Rolling Stone magazine once did an article on rock's top 100 guitarists of all time, and Page, Beck, and Clapton were in the top five. So that's one band <laughs> producing three of the top five guitar gods of all time. That's amazing. Never, of course, playing all together at the same time in the Yardbirds. So um, oftentimes, though, with that rotating guitar seat, you often had a question when you'd see a Yardbirds concert poster. You think to yourself, okay, now which guitarist was it, you know, with them at this time? Well, not with this poster. You don't have that problem at all because of, look at that, that really nice artistic rendition of the four guys' faces. And, of course, I don't have to tell you that Jimmy Page there, second from the right. In fact, he's got, it's neat, he's got a a peace symbol above his head. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Uh, the year before, by the way, there would have had to have been five faces because Jeff Beck was in the band along with Jimmy Page and that was some really some great dueling guitar work for sure. Underneath the faces and psychedelic lettering, a little hard to make out perhaps, Saturday, July 22. Again, 67 not mentioned. That's the year it is. And then in the red lettering, the red psychedelic lettering there, you've got the opening acts, Moby Grape, their first album had been released about a month ago, and Omaha, their only close call to a hit single, had hit the charts just a couple of weeks ago. Captain Beefheart, loved by many, that's for sure, quite the underground artist. He had recorded Safe as Milk, his debut, but not released it yet at the time of this show. Iron Butterfly, all the way across there in uh, one line, and they were also in the incubation stage still one year before their FM radio staple in Agata de Vida. And then below them, the West Coast Pop Art Experimental Band, who actually released two albums in the year 1967, but commercial success completely eluded them. Then the yellow stripe on the poster, as you can see, ticket prices, $3, $4, and $5, 8 p.m., and then the Santa Monica Civic Auditorium. Quite a mouthful, but a place that had many great shows over the years, that's for sure, including the Tammy Show was taped there. What was that, 64? 65? Um, so it's a great, a great hall for sure. I think it held about 3,000 or so. So collectors want to know, this thing has been reprinted and sold over the ages uh, in huge numbers because it's such a nice poster, but there was a first printing done before the show in order to sell tickets, and then the promoter, you can't really call the after prints um, bootlegs because they were done by Jim Salser, the promoter, for sale in his local record stores and through mail order. But, you know, collectors uh, who collect, like me, who collect advertising pieces more than just pretty pieces want to know how can you tell the ones printed before the show that were hung around town to sell tickets. And as often the case with Salser's, Salser's posters, it's pretty easy. You've got the printer's credit down there down at the bottom center of the yellow stripe there, and I'll try to move in closely so you can see it. It says Marin Litho Inc. with a printer's bug, and then Oxnard, California. I wonder how far I can test my the capabilities of my video camera here, but certainly you can see that. And I have the um, after printing. You can't really call it just a second because I don't know how many printings this poster has undergone, but here is one of the af after printings. We will call it the second, but as you can see there, in the yellow stripe underneath Monica Civic, 
it's just plain yellow. There's no printer's credit whatsoever, and so this is very definitely, you know, a merchandising version of the poster. Otherwise, it's pretty close. It's pretty nice. Um, but there are a couple of other ways to tell a difference beside the printer's bug, which are, which are always fun. Richard Tolmack, by the way, should be credited as the poster artist on this, the one who put in all the work. Um, interestingly, uh, below the heads and below the date, there's sort of like lines extending down in the blue there. And uh, it's not the hair of the band members, because you can see where their, their hair kind of ends on their head there. But um, you can see the line drawings here extend down into Moby and Captain. Not on the red letters, but in the green background, and even a little bit lower. I'll give you a closer in shot on that. And those uh, hairline things, um, call them what you want, drawing lines, are simply not present at all on the repro. It's just solid green, and I'll come right back with that and show you right there. As you can see, they're in the blue, but they simply do not extend down any further. The red letters are against nothing but solid green background. So that's another way, besides the printer's bug, if you want to tell the difference. It's always nice to have, you know, a couple, a couple of tells, if you will. So, um, there, you know, and then, and then there was still another printing, or was there? There's certainly a different looking version of this poster done by Salser, and voila, here it is. Look at that. Holy cats. The same poster as the second printing, but without the yellow color. And uh, I've got a good friend, Paul, who's done a lot of research on this, and Paul actually thinks this is part of the second printing. He doesn't think it's a much later third printing or something, although he acknowledges it could be. But these are sort of like, you know, um, perhaps uh, the second printing with and without the yellow color, if you will. That's one way you can distinguish those two. But, you know, any way you look at it, they, they were merchandising posters meant to be sold, and this one I'm holding here with the Marin Lithobug is the one, and the... Um, Lines extending down is the one that was printed before the show to sell tickets, which us collectors just love. So there you have it, the Yardbirds in 1967 at the Santa Monica Civic Auditorium, represented by a great poster from Jim Salser up in Ventura. Thanks a lot for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time. Have a good day. Bye-bye.